Hi guys. A few years ago, I recorded a video about how to use the oscilloscope. It was a tutorial of oscilloscope step by step. In that tutorial, I did mention about uh, I missed the good click click sounds that the dial used to make on it. The quality of that kind of equipment. By things in destiny. My good friend Eric, he managed to preserve my oscilloscope and now is here with me thanks to him. The oscilloscope and one of the bench multimeters I used to work with. And now let's watch a little bit about how did I make the conversion from 110 volts, 60 hertz to 220, 50 hertz. Probably the oscilloscope will need also some maintenance and, you know, dirty contacts, uh, some filters, adjustments, things like that, that we will watch later in another video, probably. But let's watch a little bit about the conversion. There were two main equipments, the digital bench multimeter and the analog oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is the VK Precision 10 MHz model 1471B. The V serial is the second of this kind of production. My serial number was in the 600 something, so was literally part of the first batch of oscilloscopes of the serial V. The difference with the first one, with the A, the A didn't have any calibration knob. The multimeter is the data precision 2480R. It's a true RMS multimeter and four digits and a half. This oscilloscope reached in the dial to one microsecond. It sounds wonderful on those years when I got it. I'm talking about more than 30 years ago. This oscilloscope is for beginners for the entry level. And anyhow, as an engineer, I worked all those years with it and I made all my tasks with, with this kind of oscilloscope. Nowadays, thanks to Siglen, I have an oscilloscope 200 MHz. It's the STS 1204XE series and I can reach wonderful one nanoseconds with it. Comparing with my old oscilloscope is a huge difference. Same thing in the vertical. My old oscilloscope was 10 millivolts in the vertical scale. And my Siglen oscilloscope, we are talking about 500 microvolts in the vertical scale. My old oscilloscope was 120 volts and I had to make the conversion. It doesn't require too much engineering. I only have to unplug one of the connectors, flip it, put it back and voila, now it's 220. And also, guys, let's remember, to make this kind of conversion, we also need to change the fuse. I didn't do it yet. I have to do it. The truth is, after its normal use and about five years stored, it doesn't have too much dust. So that's good so far. Something we like a lot about this kind of technology is the through hole components. Most of them they are easy to replace and very easy to find. Just very few are special components for the oscilloscope. The rest of them, they are just regular normal components we can find at any shop. I found a lot of broken solder. And as we can appreciate here, just watch a little bit around this. Ping. This other one too. 
and we have to watch the other side where this port is connected. Those are L-kind pins, and they are turning in 90, de 90 degrees, and you will watch the same situation in the other side. When you find a problem like that, don't think about to replace one. You have to retouch a lot of solder. This oscilloscope got a lot of use. Uh, it, it's a portable oscilloscope on its time with its eight kilos. And it, it used to travel in a baggage with rolls on the sidewalks everywhere. And that's a lot of damage with the time. Also, probably this trip in the airplane didn't help too much too. That the damage was already done. This is the typical open circuit, open solder. And as you can watch, the one in the top is on the way to be broken too. So when you fix one, you have to retouch a lot of them too in order to prevent the next problem. Now, let's take a look. In one megahertz, not too bad, eh? Looks good so far, but believe it or not, it's not so good. I will show you why. The wave is thinner in one side, thicker in the other. And also the square wave, if we appreciate, is not to totally flat in the top. So I have to readjust the filters and set up the oscilloscope as it should be. Now with the digital multimeter, it wasn't so easy because I didn't remember what did I do when I made the conversion. So I have to put one next to the other and figure it out. Believe me guys, it was very easy. I just forgot it. So let's pay attention. How does it work? It has four wires. Orange, brown, sorry, orange, red, brown, and white. This kind of transformer is just two primary windings and what I have to do is only to separate them because they are in parallel and put them in serial. That's all. So cut one side, cut the other and put them together and that's it. Now I have a 220 volts transformer. I am not the kind of person who believes in karma. I think in different way. I think we are creating the network of the future in the present. We just get back in the future what we did today. And who knows? Funny things from destiny. I don't know if you watch it in my old videos that in my other laboratory, I used to have my multimeter and next to it, a metal box. The metal box was just refilling the place and working as support for the oscilloscope. Who was going to think that in the future, one of my multimeters was going to come back to me and refill that space next to its partner and to do the job together in the laboratory? Funny things from destiny. Thanks to my friend Eric, God bless him, and see you next time with more videos about electronics. Thanks for watching.